thank you very much, everyone, uh, for joining me today. So I'm Michael Kong, the CEO of the Fanta Foundation. Uh, we're a layer one uh, blockchain. And today, I want to talk about specifically how we're improving smart contract execution. So a lot of it has to do with the work that um, uh, Professor Schultz and his uh, programming languages team um, have been up to. And there's a lot of exciting development. Because I know a lot of people have been talking about FEM and a whole bunch of stuff. Well, there's some stuff about that coming up. Um, so first of all, um, this is what I'll be talking about. And uh, to begin with, so the Opera client. So the Opera client is basically our mainnet, right? So it's basically like um, the decentralized network of nodes. Um, the nodes run this client. It's originally based off of GEF um, with a whole bunch of changes, which allows us to process transactions asynchronously. So you can, uh, uh, the network can process blocks like four or five blocks simultaneously rather than just like one block sequentially, right? And finality is deterministic and only requires one block confirmation. So you don't need like five or six block confirmations after the first block confirmation. You just need one block confirmation and your transaction is done. So we have like very high network throughput as a result of the changes that we made to the consensus. And it's, it's open source, it's leaderless, so all the nodes are treated equally. Anyone can go in and edit the code base, and anybody can join and leave the network at any time. Um, and, and so, um, however, um, there is a problem though, and that is to do with the fact that we're EVM based. Because the EVM does work well. You know, it executes smart contracts. You know, we use the EVM or the Ethereum virtual machine, same technology stack that, say, Ethereum uses. But the problem is that it, it executes transactions sequentially. And there are a lot of um, are problems with the speed, especially around how you read and write data. Um, so this is just a slide that kind of like details basically how uh, blocks are processed in um, Phantom at the moment. So you can see that you, know, you have a change in state, which is basically a change in the data of the blockchain you know, from state 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to n. And at each step in the process, you have to get the EVM to basically like rerun the transaction across all the nodes. right? And you've got to continuously do that and read and write a lot of data every single time you change the state of the blockchain. So what's the problem that I'm talking about today? Well, it's that block processing or transaction processing is quite slow. And I'll get into a lot of details like what I mean by it's slow. It limits the, um, the transactions that you can perform per second, and it, reduce, it increases your time to finality. Because when we talk about transaction processing, it's not just a matter of um, consensus, right? It's not just a matter of like nodes talking to one another and then um, um, uh, being able to process transactions and come to an agreement about the ledger, right? <laughs> it's always about the step before that, that each computer, before they can sign off on the transaction or each node in the network, <laughs> has to e execute a series of steps. And the more complicated the transaction, i.e., like the more complicated, say, you're executing a smart contract, the more gas is required to execute the transaction, the more time it takes up. And therefore, what our approach is in order to solve this problem is to apply what we call performance engineering. So that goes through profiling the results, looking the results on data, building solutions to improve the results, testing again, and seeing if the results are better um, like afterwards rather than before. And if we get better metrics, then we know that we're pretty much on the right, um, uh, on the right path. So it's a combination of theoretical plus empirical like research and development that we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to profile the network, right? <clears throat> so this is about how do you actually like, uh, test on the actual like, network itself to make sure that your changes are actually going to be working better in production. So um, there are a bunch of like, performance tools we've recently developed on Phantom. <laughs> and a lot of the technolog uh, technology here is actually like, quite um, innovative and hasn't been done before. So <clears throat> um, the technology team, which consists of um, my old professor, Bernard Schultz, who uh, um, is a professor in programming languages, expert in virtual machines, and this sort of development. He built a team around him of PhDs or former students and former colleagues that he worked with. And they built a tool uh, called Substate Technology, which allows you to replay and rebuild these transactions in isolation and actually do um, the execution a lot faster. Because right now, <coughs> um, if you try and like, a um, uh, uh, profile of the entire chain, right? You make some new changes, and you want to run it against all the chain history in, in Phantom. So Phantom has um, uh, processed about 41 to 42 million blocks right now, right? If you were to pro process one transaction at a time or one block at a time and recreate the entire state, <laughs> right now, when we've done it, it's taken us about two weeks. However, with the new tool that we've built, we can do it in a matter of hours, right? And just the, just the graph on the bottom right kind of describes like, how much time um, 
uh, processing transactions take, right? So about approximately 85% of it is taken up by what's called state DB. So that's how you read and write data on the chain. And uh, the remaining amount, or most of the remaining amount, around 12 or 13%, is about the Ethereum virtual machine itself. Like actually, actually like executing the sequence of instructions in order to make sure that uh, you can actually like run a smart contract, basically. So what is subset? It's this new technology where you can basically process tra transactions in parallel. So instead of just like processing one transaction at a, uh, at a time, you can actually take um, uh, the data, you can put it into another database, you can restructure the data, and so you can basically just add a whole bunch of computers in order to actually like um, execute um, these transactions in parallel. So instead of you know taking like two um, uh, two weeks in order to execute um, the chain all over again, it only takes maybe two to three hours on a modern computer, just running like um, uh, multiple um, uh, multiple databases in parallel, and you can process all 41 million blocks, which allows us to test a lot fast style changes. And this basically kind of describes how it kind of works. It's a little bit complicated, so I'll just skip it. Only have 15 minutes. Um, this is also part of the, um, of, of, of the technology that we use in order to do performance engineering. Again, this is work that we've all done from scratch ourselves. We publish papers on it you know, in, in pretty good journals. We presented it at, at, at programming languages conferences, and it was peer reviewed. So we, we've, we think we're pretty confident that this actually works. So what do we actually want to achieve? Why are we doing all this work? Well, what we want to do is increase the number of transactions we can process per second, because ultimately that's what users care about, right? And we have an aspirational name that I, uh, uh, aim that I've told the team of being able to process about 100 million transactions on a daily basis. It's a high bar, but we need to get there if we want to be able to have lots of people using the chain. Uh, it's, it's no good just being able to process a few million transactions on a daily basis. You need to be able to process a lot more than that. So <clears throat> there's a lot of work that's happening right now. It <laughs> comes down to improving, um, it coming up with a new virtual machine and coming, coming up with a new way of doing reads and writes when it comes to uh, database work. So what are the current EVM problems? So there's a lot of like, complicated detail here. But basically, it's a pretty simple like, execution machine, right? It executes a lot of instructions that might not necessarily need to be executed, right? And here are just some of the examples of the transactions um, um, that, that kind of are executed, um, which require a lot of time to execute, and you can kind of improve on. But I want to stress again that the virtual machine is only about 13% of the bottleneck. The other 80% is more to do with the read and the writes that I'll also get into shortly. So what are we building? We're building a new virtual machine. We're building one that's like EVM compatible, or more specifically, compatible with the Solidity compiler. So the way that um, a, an individual will be able to read and write smart contracts um, through Solidity will work the same way with this new virtual machine. <laughs> it'll be fast. It'll come up. We, we've got a bunch of um, uh, ideas already in production in the prototype related to what's called dynamic translation and super instruction sets that I'll get into more detail. And it's got to be efficient for all range of contracts, small contracts, large contracts, and for large quantities of contracts as well. So what's the new virtual machine? Well, we call it the LFEM at the moment, the Light Phantom Virtual Machine. This is a prototype virtual machine. It's not a production ready, but we're already actually testing it using the previous subset technology that I talked about. In other words, we're testing it on the main chain data. We're not testing it on you know, fake data. We're not testing on testnet data. We're testing on mainnet data. And these are some of the results that we're already getting at the moment. So we're able to implement things such as super instruction support. So basically, it means that um, whereas like a, uh, you, you might require five or six instructions in order to execute um, uh, something related to a smart contract, you can actually condense it into like a single instruction, right? So for example, an if statement on the EVM machine may require several transaction, uh, several um, uh, steps in the virtual machine in order to execute. Um, we, we can just do it in a single, um, uh, uh, we can just do it in a, simple, a single instruction. And with these improvements, right now we get a 45% faster performance compared to EVM when you, when you use um, uh, a GIF, which is what um, Opera is based off of. Um, and these are some of the benefits as well in, in a bit more detail. When you use super instruction sets, when you kind of reduce the number of operations you've got to do, you get better ga uh, gas calculations. And we're also experimenting with ideas around how do you run transactions in parallel. So if we can run multiple transactions in parallel of the same block, you'll get even better performance improvements. Now, that's something that we're not sure will actually work in the end, but it's something that we're experimenting with right now. So we do have a virtual machine in production right now. It's not quite ready uh, for the mainnet, but it's getting along, and it's t we're testing against the mainnet itself. 
I, I now want to move on to what are known as storage problems. So as I mentioned before, it's about 80, 85% of, of transaction processing time, right? So this is a bigger um, area that we want to work on in order to get much better performance improvements when it comes to transaction processing. So what are the issues? Um, well, right now, the way that, say, Ethereum and many EVM-based chains um, <coughs> process transactions is via um, or, 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 or read and write data is via what's known as a Merkle partition try. Basically, it's like a tree-based structure, and it's quite slow um, because you have to like traverse the tree every time that you want to execute a transaction, and the tree grows as, as your chain size grows. So that means that progressively, it gets slower and slower and slower to use a chain. That's the same thing for Phantom. That's the same thing for Ethereum. That's the same thing for any chain that uses the EVM-based technology. It, the, 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 that's exactly what's happening. And in particular, the opcodes S-store and s -load, so that's storing data and loading data, that are slowest. And so what we want to do is try and address that problem. So how are we addressing that problem? Well, we don't have a new um, storage system right now being tested in production. We're a little bit behind on it compared to the new virtual machine because the work is a little bit more difficult. There are a lot of security considerations that need to be taken into account, uh, which I won't get into all the details of because it's quite complicated. <coughs> but basically, um, the basic idea is this. <laughs> um, for programmers that are out there, you know, reading data from an array is pretty fast, right? You know, <laughs> it's constant time for, from an indexed array, right? Um, <laughs> because you can just look up at the index, go to where the element is, and retrieve the data, or go, <laughs> go to the index, save the data in that index, and you know its position in the array, right? You don't have to traverse a tree or a list or anything like that, right? The problem is, OK, the concept is simple, but how do you actually do it in a blockchain, right? <laughs> well, one of the ideas is basically um, to hash unique combinations of pairs, right? <laughs> so on the blockchain, you know, keys are unique, addresses are unique. If you can, if you, if you can hash them or you can compress them <laughs> into a, a, a way of, of indexing your data, then this is a potential way that you're able to store and retrieve data in constant time, rather this um, big coefficient factor of, of log n, right? Um, now, there's a trade-off here in that you have to store a bit more data on your chain because you have to store, store, store these references that were not there um, that existed before. But you're also getting um, rid of the, the MBT as well. So you get the savings in that way. But there is a bit of a cost to this, and it is experimental. But this is like basically the idea that we're working with. Um, but again, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of security considerations when it comes to the solution. So I'm not saying that we have a solution right now, but I think we're on the right track based on like, kind of like the thinking and the theoretical work that we've done as well. And, and, and this is basically like how the, the storage would work. Um, you, know, you basically like, you know, put all this data in an array, you read it into memory, <laughs> you create these hashes or the indexes, and then you can store and retrieve data. And notice that there's no, notice that there's no uh, tree-based structure in this arrangement at all. So what are some of the um, future work and challenges? Well, we got to now. We got to build um, like an actual like a flat storage solution that uh, that we can test on, right? So we're not at the stage yet where we can actually run it in um, you know against the profiling results as well against production level data. We have done that for the virtual machine. We haven't done that for the storage data at the moment, right? So we need to do that. We we need also implement uh, um, uh, uh, it, it on the test net as well to make it sure that it actually like works. Um, on the on the chain as well and, and behaves properly with a small amount of data before we get a large amount of data, and we also may need to modify an existing protocol of ours called SnapSync, which allows you to sync nodes really really fast to one another. There's a few complications there. What, with regards to the new Phantom virtual machine, we want to explore ideas about how do you process transactions in parallel, as I mentioned, within the same block. And blocks can contain you know, anywhere from like one transaction technically to like 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 transactions, depending on the amount of network throughput at a given point in time. Um, we also want to improve um, the amount of super instruction sets that we've developed right now. So far, we've done about 22, but we can do quite a few more than that. And we also want to find a good way of how do you actually apply a fair gas cost to these new super instruction sets? Because you have to apply new gas costs to these new instructions because they're new instructions uh, from the previous instructions, right? And what we're also testing out in performance <laughs> is potentially switching out um, uh, the storage and uh, the Phantom virtual machine uh, to C++ from Golang. Because based on our theoretical understanding of programming languages, we think C++ could give you an additional maybe two or three times better performance than um, uh, Golang itself. And it has to do with the structure of the programming language. Now, that's something that we're not exactly sure about because we haven't tested it in production, but that is something that we're, we're looking to do. 
And uh, that's the end of my presentation. And this is our website. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.